Well, hello, I'm <laughs> Chantel, uh, Chantel Rohr, and I'm actually part of New Hope at, at Puyallup uh, with Jeffrey Portman and um, have been there for the past year and a half. Yes, well, you will not hear me. This is for recording purposes. So I will be speaking in this mic to record it and hopefully not throw the mic at any of you. And, um, but I will repeat questions and stuff you have as well so that it can be recorded. I'm not going to worry about this. We're just going to go. So I did have a PowerPoint for you, but it's all right. We're going to go without that today. So, um, but today we're going to be talking about check-in practices, excellent check-in practices. And um, so we're going to start with that. And on your, I, did all of you get a sheet? I want to make sure you all got a sheet. For those that love to take notes, you're welcome to. If not, then listening is great too. So, um, but we're going to talk about check-in uh, practices. And so the first part are there, there are non-negotiables, okay? There are things that no matter if you come from a small church, a large church, whether it's visitors, whether it's regular people um, that are checking in, that everybody wants to, to do, right? Everybody wants to make sure that um, you're doing as a team. So does anyone want to take a guess real quick at what some of those non-negotiable, non-negotiables, excuse me, would be? When you have someone checking in, what do you want them to see? What do you want them to experience? Anybody? A friendly person. A friendly person, which a friendly person often comes with a smile, okay? Smile, and not one of those smiles where you're like, oh, I really don't want to be here right now, and I'm going to welcome you, and I'm going to smile with this awful grin, right? No, smiles. We want people to smile, okay? Another, what's another thing that, that you may want someone to experience when they come in? Any others? Confidence, okay, yeah, having confidence would be definitely that. How about extended hand, okay? Kids, you're probably not going to shake their hand. You're probably not going to be like, hey, how's it going to the little kids? You're probably going to be like, hey, what's up? High fives, awesome, right? You want to give people the, that extended hand, no matter if they're new or if they're, they're regulars, right? Another thing, initiating conversations. You're going to make people feel welcome and check in if you're initiating conversations. They aren't going to feel comfortable if the, if the greeter or the teacher is like, hey, what's up? Right? And then waits for the kid to come up and be like, hey, because how many know that most kids, before they know you, they're not going to come up to you and be like, hey, how's it going? There are exceptions, but most kids are going to be kind of shy, going, what in the world's going on? So initiating those conversations. One thing you need to remember, though, with conversations, when you're in check-in mode, is the conversations need to be short but genuine. Short but genuine. Because if you're over here having this long conversation with this family and someone else comes in and you're having this long, meaningful conversation, are the next group of people, are they going to feel welcome? No, they're not going to feel welcome. So conversations, you want them to be short but genuine. You don't want them to feel like you're fake. Okay? You don't want them to feel like you're fake. Eye contact. Okay? How many of you have ever had that experience where you're talking to someone and they're looking over your shoulder? How many of you have ever done that yourself? I'm guilty of that. You're talking to someone and you see a really dear friend right behind and you're like, oh, hi, sorry, I want to wave to my friend real fast. And there are times where that's okay, but when you're having a genuine conversation, especially with a new person, having that eye contact is so important to make them feel welcome, to make them feel valued, right? People are going to come back when they feel valued and when they feel like they were worth spending time with, right? They want to feel that, okay? Another thing, with children, we need to remember to get down to their level, right? When you have kids coming in, get down on your knee. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's so good to see you. I understand if you're at a point where you physically can't do something like that, but bending over, getting in conversation with them at their eye level, they're going to feel more important, okay? No one really likes to feel like we're towered over and we're looking at someone like, hey, how's it going? You know, it kind of makes them uncomfortable. So get down at the kid's level. Give them high fives. If you're greeting toddlers, definitely get down. Okay, they're already, you're already having a hard time connecting with them because they're grabbing mom's leg or whatever and they're hiding between legs. That's what my kid does at least, Right? But when someone gets down at their level, gives them high fives, gives them eye contact, and talks to them, they're more willing to be open to coming back and staying. Okay? 
Another really, really important non-negotiable, learn and remember names, right? Learn and remember names. Luckily, in most kids' ministries, you have name tags. You don't get that with adults. So you're like, hi, Susie, and your parents' names are John and what's their name again, right? It's hard. But if you're doing check-in, you get to learn those names a lot faster. But we need to, need to put an effort into learning them and remembering them. And, you know, if you meet them one week and they're back the next week and you don't remember their name, ask them. They're not going to be offended. They're going to be offended six months down the road when you still don't know their name, right? But the first couple of weeks, oh, hey, I'm so sorry. I remember meeting you. It was so great to meet you last week. But can you remind me your name? They're going to totally be like, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, and what's your name, right? Also, when you're green, don't forget to tell people your name, right? Hey, I'm Chantel. It's so good to see you, right? So they have that connection. And the last non-negotiable that I want to talk about is ask questions to learn about the families. Simple questions, okay? Like I said, conversations, you want them to be short, but you want to get to know the families. So each week, ask a new question. Maybe you have that one question that you ask all the families. Maybe not. Maybe, how's your week going? Oh, did you have a soccer game? How did it go? Oh, you lost. Well, hopefully this next one. When's your next game? Hopefully you can get the next one, right? Well, whatever it is, build those relationships with those families. Get them talking. Get them comfortable. So those are some non-negotiables that you always want to have with check-in. And most of those are like, oh, yeah, common sense. But sometimes we still need to remember, oh, yeah, I do need to put a smile on my face. Not be ungenuine, not be fake, but put a smile. We're supposed to be marked with joy, right? We are, sh we are showing Christ to people. And even in hard times, we can be grateful and praise God because we have another day to live. We have another day to minister to these kids. We're marked with joy. Let them see that. Let them see that. So that's just non-negotiables that you're going to have no matter what. So I want to get a little bit of a feel for the room. I'm going to have you raise your hand. How many of you come from, um, say you have check-in systems set up in their own separate location? So you have a, a foyer that you have check-in systems. Go and raise your hand, whatever it is. Okay, how about if you check in in your classroom? Like each, you go to your classrooms and your kids check in in your classrooms? Okay, how many of you, raise your hand, if you use electronic systems, which I have a very um, love-hate relationship with, which I'm sure all of you probably do as well. <laughs> They're awesome, but got to love Wi-Fi problems, right? How many of you use paper pen kind of procedures where they sign in on a sheet, they get a name tag, things like that? That just give me a feel for, for what I'm going to talk about today. So, all right, for preparations, there are things that you have to have prepared, whether you use electronic, whether you use paper or pen, you have to know your procedure. What is your check-in procedure? Okay. When the kids get there, what are the steps that they have to go through to get checked in? Right? You have to have that in place. Once you have that in place, you have to train greeters. Whether the greeter is your teachers or your assistants or whether you have separate greeters, you have to train them. How do they get the kids to check in? How do they involve and engage families when they come in, right? Families are going to feel more welcome. If you're at a teacher and you, got a, you have someone at the, the door, they're going to feel more welcome. Their kids are going to feel more welcome with someone there to greet them than if you're just walking around and kids just freely come in, right? So you have to train your teachers, your greeters, on how to communicate with families. Train them to get out of their comfort zone and say, hey, it's so good to see you. Oh, did you have an awesome week? Oh, great. Okay, short, short conversations again, but you have to train your teachers and your greeters so they know what to say. What do they do when kids don't want to come to the classroom? How are they going to make that kid feel welcome? That may seem like common sense to some of us, but to others, that terrifies them. They don't know what to do. The toddler's screaming, what do I do? Do I take the kid? Do I leave him there? What do I do? What do I do? Right? You have to train your, your team on how to accept visitors to accept regulars, because I know not just visitors scream at the door sometimes, right? Okay, so train your team 
on how to, the procedure, but also how to deal with conflict at the door if there's something going on, how to invite people in, how to make kids feel welcome, because it can be very overwhelming, very overwhelming for some kids, even if they have a blast. You know, you always have those kids that they scream at the door, their parents walk away, three seconds later they're fine and they're having a blast, and then they see their parent and they start crying again, and you're like, I promise, the child was not crying the whole time. The child was having a lot of fun, right? But how do you deal with those things? Train your team on that. Okay. Another thing, keep the check-in area clean and organized. That makes them feel, oh, they're ready for me, right? Clean and organized, which can be a little harder to do with paper and pen because you got all the paper and all the, you know, the labels, all the extra stuff that needs to be thrown away. But keep it clean and organized. That's a big part of preparation. Another one, your signage. Make sure it's clear for people to see. Make sure they know where to go. But also, as a greeter, signage is important, but also make sure your greeters know where the kids go. You don't want someone to show up and be like, hey, where's my three-year-old goal? Oh, um, let, me, let, me, let me check that. Uh, that's in room, uh, right? You want it, your greeters and everybody to know where to go. But the signage is going to help a lot with that. Another thing, provide clear and understandable traffic flows. This is really hard in some churches. I know when I was at Faith Assembly Lacey, you have this long, skinny hallway that used to look like a hospital hallway. It was freaky, but they let them paint it finally, so that's good. But um, this long, skinny hallway, which is really hard when you have a lot of kids, and the, and the, service or the services are like 15 minutes apart. So you have all these parents coming down to pick their kids up, while you have all these parents coming to drop their kids off, right? So you have this mess of people. Try your best, no matter what your situation is, to make sure that the flow is clear, that people know, hey, this is the, you know, people kind of get the, on the road, you know which side of the road to drive on, unless you're from a different country, okay? You know which side of the road to drive on. Same thing with your hallways and the flow that you have. Is your check-in first? I mean, it's kind of weird if you have all these classrooms over here and then, they have to walk over here to check in, and then they have to go back over here to classrooms. Try to figure out the best location um, for your check-ins. Maybe that is at your classrooms. Maybe that's having a separate location. Whatever that is, make it clear for people so they understand the flow of traffic. And then if you use paper and pen, make sure you have enough supplies. Right? Make sure you have enough pens for people to sign in. Make sure you have the right sign-in sheets. Make sure you have the n all the name tags that you need. Because there's nothing worse than running out of name tags and being like, uh, oh, we still have another service. What am I going to do? Right? So make sure you have enough of the, the supplies that you need, especially f like visitor forms. Make sure you have enough of those, too. Don't, be, don't think, oh, I'll only, and, and Seahawks playing today, probably only have like two visitors. There's, there's only about two, three sheets there. We'll be good. Because you never know. You never know who's going to show up at your church. And you want that opportunity to get that information from those families, right? So make sure you have enough. Now, if you have an electronic system, you can run into a lot of problems. And I'm not going to get into a ton of electronic systems. Don't ask me what the best one is because... It's not created yet. So I'm just, I'm just kidding. So, but there's some things that you need to do. First off, always do the updates before the day of the services or gatherings that you have. How many of you have ever been in that situation where you forget to do, let it run? You get there, you start, you know, set up. I'm from a, a church plant. We set up every Sunday morning. Set up took a little longer because all these other little things kept going wrong and so-and-so was sick and didn't show up and you know you're trying to figure all this stuff out. Oh my gosh I have the check-in system to go to. You get there and you start the computer and it's like updates. 20 updates needed. It's going to take about da -da -da -da, right? Do it before services, before gathering, before your midweeks so that it's done and taken care of so when you get there you can set it up and it fires up right away. Okay? We forget about the updates. I've done it several times. Okay? Get those updates done. Okay? Also, you need to clean the printers. Things need to be cleaned. They get dusty. They get dirty. Clean the printers so that they, they work well. And sometimes with those printers, 
un um, taking the power off and plugging it back in is all you need to fix the problem, right? So give it a break. Things aren't always meant to be plugged in and run all the time, right? So turn stuff off. Give it a break. Do the updates. Clean the printer, okay? Another thing, the antivirus programs. Make sure they're up to date so that they're catching all that stuff so that your computer doesn't get all this junk on it, right? And the final thing, have a plan B. What are you going to do when Wi-Fi is down? What are you going to do when the printers don't seem to want to work no matter what you try? What are you going to do when the USB cables don't work, the, the jack got broken? And in that moment, you can't do anything with that system. What's your plan B? What are you going to do to fix that? Okay, That's where going back to paper and pen is often a great option, having those name tags. Okay, One thing that I did with my church um, for that, that plan B, I had the, I don't remember, there's like 10 to a sheet name tags. So I had made name tags that had the child's name, the parent's number, and then on the bottom it had a number. So for, we have two different campuses. For South Hill I put SH, and then I'd put number 25, whatever. And then on the, s right across from that, I would have um, just the child's name and the matching number. So the parent would write their kid's name, their number, that go on the kid's back. The one uh, right across from it, the parent would write their kid's name, take that, and that was their security ticket back. That's a plan B for um, a s electric system, el electronic, not electric, it's electric, electronic system that worked that we never, we didn't have to really use much, but when it we did, we had that as a backup and it still provided security for families, okay? So those are some things with electronics. Now we're gonna talk about visitors and um, then I'll, have you, I'll let you guys ask some questions and things like that, but now we're gonna talk about visitors. What do you do with visitors, okay? What do you do with visitors? What are the steps when visitors come? Okay. Any any suggestions? What are some steps that you go through when when someone new comes to the greeter or to your door? What do you do for a visitor? Thank you, Tom. You want to introduce who you are. Yes. Anything else? Explain what, Explain what they can expect. Why is that important? They're leaving your child. They want to know what's going to happen, right? They want to know what's going to happen. This is on my sheet explaining what to expect. They want to know what are their kids going to be doing. Are their kids going to be having snack? That's important because there's lots of allergies, right? What do we do when we ch pick up our kid? Okay, right now we know we come sign them here. What's the process for picking up our kid? How are you going to keep my kids safe? What are the bathroom policies, right? They want to know what to expect. On the flip side of that, you don't want to overwhelm them with too much information, okay? But just, you know, hey, oh, we're so excited. You want to know what you're going to do today? You're going to have some worship. There's going to be a really cool story, and you're going to play a really fun game. And then mom's going to come back to the room and going to pick you up. Talking to the kid but still connecting with the parent is a great way to go. Don't always feel like you have to connect with the parent. Don't ignore the parent. But when the kid's feeling uncomfortable, get down to their level and tell them and the parent what to expect, okay? Just simple, quick one-minute blurb. That's what's going to happen. Anything else? Yes, tactfully get information. There, you can get, give them this huge sheet that's way too much information, or you can give them a little connection card connection card that has very minimal information, but still gets you enough information that you need. So some of the main things you're going to want, parent's name, parent's cell phone, because how are you going to connect to the parent if something happens in the classroom? Except for parents are horrible about leaving their cell phones on in church, too. So it's kind of one of those, you still have to go chase after parents sometimes. But parent's cell phone, right? If they'll give you the email, great. You want the kid's name, kid's birth date, kid's allergies, don't forget allergies or medical conditions, okay? You don't need a ton of information, right? But you can get that, that small amount. And one cool way to um, get those cards back, because a lot of people don't like to fill them out, um, is prizes, okay? 
What are you doing for your visitors? Give them a gift. Who doesn't like a gift, right? Welcome. We're so excited you're here. Give them a gift. And um, I know one of my friends, Josh Wood, he's actually with Kevin Garrett in Montana. Um, they have these connection cards that th they fill out. And they have to take those connection cards straight to Pastor Josh, right? Straight to Josh. And then Josh, their church is able to do this. Some churches are not. But Josh gives each kid an ice cream card, $5 ice cream card. How cool is that? If you're able to do something like that, take advantage of that. Because what kid is not going to want an ice cream cone, right? So take advantage of those gifts and those things. Maybe it's just a candy bar. Maybe it's, you know, a little bracelet or whatever, a dollar store prize. Kids don't care. They're like, oh my gosh, it's a prize, right? They love prizes. Give them a gift. Don't, don't be afraid to do that. Be generous, right? Be generous with that time. So, um, so filling out those forms, getting those cards, getting gifts, explaining what to expect, okay? Even how long the service is. Some people don't realize how long a service is, okay? Letting them know, okay? Um, but, and then before you leave them, say, hey, are there any questions I can answer for you? Simple question like that. That's also going to allow you to realize how much information should I give and how much should I not, okay? And then escorts. If you can do this, if they're not going straight to your classroom, this is a fantastic way. Rather than saying, oh, you're in this room over here, just follow and turn, turn that way. And then, oh, yeah, you're going to walk down that hallway. And they're going to be lost after, like, the first direction, right? Having someone that can run them down, that can take them to the classroom, okay, is so important. But more than that, when they get to that classroom, have that escort or that runner say, hey, this is da 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 and this is your teacher, da 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 It's important that you make that connection, okay? And one amazing thing you can do with kids, especially if they're shy, if you know kids well enough, you can say, hey, Joey, come on over. Hey, Joey, guess what? This is Tim's first week. Can he hang out with you? Can he be your buddy? Right away, you're connecting friends. You want to, as greeters, give them other connections. You cannot be the only connection for those families. You have to connect them to other people, right? Because you cannot know everybody. You cannot be everybody's best friend, right? And we do not always connect with everybody, but there are other people that may. So having that buddy or connecting them to different families is really important, okay? Um, a couple of really quick other notes, and then um, we'll have a Q&A time just for a few minutes. Um, sometimes if you have, for visitors, if you have a separate check-in uh, check area, it's better, um, depending on your church setup and things like that. That way, the regular check-in can go fast, because how many know it takes a little longer when you have them filling out the connection card or putting their information in the system that you have, whatever it is. It takes a little longer for visitors, and you don't have quite as much time to answer those questions, because remember, I said conversations need to be short, right? But if you have that separate visitor guest area, you can take a little bit more time with families. Not too much to where you, you know they're like, seriously, can we stop right now? I, I gotta, we're already late to church, you know? But if they want to have that conversation, if they want to ask more questions, having that separate location frees you up to do that a little bit more, okay? Um, introducing visitors that are comfortable. If you have kids that are new and, they're, and they seem outgoing and they want to be, you know, welcomed, introduce them. Some kids do not like that. They will freak out. Get a feel for the kid and just be aware of that. Um, one thing that I've done in the past is a little bit more work at, at the beginning, but it is, um, and you do not have to do this, but this is just a, another idea, having a check-in form in your um, classroom, or, or you can do it different ways, but where you have the kid's name, the parent's name, the cell number, allergies, and you can check them in that day. So you as the teacher or a volunteer knows who's in your classroom because what happens if there's a fire? You have a class of 30 kids. How are you going to keep track? Okay, just a suggestion. I've done it. Once you get it in the system, it's really easy, and then we just go through and clean it out every six months and just add new visitors and things like that. But for safety and things like that, it's not a bad idea. Um, maybe I think about that more because I'm in a theater and they do popcorn and oven stuff when we're still there. So there is a chance of a fire happening bigger than other churches, but 
just something to think about for if there was an emergency, you would have that list of kids. And that can be a chart, that can be even, you know, you have something on the board where the kid has something that they have every week that they just move, kind of like a, in a school. Oh, Susie's here, and you know, so you can just quickly take a look at it, okay? Just something small. One thing that I also did, whenever we had visitors and I got the con connect forms, I would write a welcome card that week and I would send it. Especially if you got to meet the person. Oh, it was so great to meet you and your family. We hope you come back, you know, whatever it is. Please let us know if you have any questions. I'm here for you. Simple card that I'd send out. Um, and people actually responded to that really well. So it is another thing, but I think it's a thing that's worth doing if you have the um, capability to do that. So, and then uh, um, finally, identifying visitors by using connection cards and prizes. Oh, I talked about that. Um, sorry, another way besides the connection card and the gift, like the ice cream card, you could do bracelets. That's actually what Lisa does at our church now. Um, when a visitor is new, they get this fun bracelet. It has little smiley faces. So when that kid walks in with a bracelet, she knows they're a visitor. Um, it's a great trip. Kids don't know. Kids have no idea. They're just like, oh, cool, I got a bracelet, right? But she and her team know when they see those bracelets, that person is new.